Hello everyone, welcome back to Two Sweet MTG and welcome to another Commander video. In today's episode, we're spelunking down into the Lost Caverns of Ixalan to take a look at our first Commander from the set, the Ancient One. It is a blue and a black for an 8-8 legendary creature, Spirit God. It has Descend 8, which means it can't attack or block unless there are 8 or more permanents in your graveyard. And also, pay 2 blue and a black to draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, target player mills cards equal to its mana value. So, a 2 mana 8-8 eight eight, you say? That is a lot of stats. To get it up there and going, it only needs 8 or more permanents in our graveyard. If you've ever played a mill deck before, you know that's not too hard. The bottom ability helps play into that, as we can discard an expensive spell and then mill ourselves until we get to the point where it can attack and block. But why stop with milling ourselves when we can also mill our opponents with this ability? And that's how we're going to be building the deck today. We're going to be milling everyone at the table, and then using everyone's graveyards as a resource for us to use and abuse. We'll also be running a bunch of expensive spells with built-in cost reduction. This is so we can maximise the amount of cards we mill if we discard them to the Ancient One, but also keeps our curve actually manageable. On top of all of that, we also have the nice backup win condition of our commander being a 2 mana 8-8, eight eight, so we can run a little Voltron package as well. A quick word on how this video will work. How we do these deck lists is that we give you all the different sections that you need to run in the deck. We tell you how many cards to run in each section, and then give you a bunch of options for you to pick to make the deck your own. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. While you're there, please give the video a like. Okay, first up is some mill cards. These are spells that will specifically help us put a bunch of cards into ours and our opponent's graveyards. First up on the list is Training Grounds. And I know, while not actually a mill spell itself, it does reduce the cost of the activated ability of our commander, meaning we can use it to discard and mill someone all the easier. You then have Illusionist Bracers, which if we stick on our commander, will let us do the ability twice for each time we activate it. Next, we actually have some cards that will mill every player. First up, we have effects on permanence, with cards like Eye Collector, Ghoul Caller's Bell, Folio of Fancies, Mesmeric Orb, Vantress Gargoyle, the best of the bunch in Court of Cunning, as well as Invasion of Amonkhet and Dreamborn Muse. These all fill up everyone's graveyard, while also importantly being permanents, which means if they get milled themselves, they count toward that descend count of our commander. Next up we have Infernal Genesis. I think this card is really cool. At everyone's upkeep, everyone mills a card and makes 1-1s one equal to the mills card's value. Now, I know this is a little cute and could very much backfire, but our deck will have a bunch of expensive things that we are playing anyway to pitch with our commander, so the whole symmetrical effects aren't really symmetrical is very much important here. I personally really like it. We then have some other spells that mill everyone that aren't on permanence. Cards like Shared Trauma, Fascination and Chiller Foreboding will all still do a really good job at getting everyone's graveyards nice and full. There's plenty more of these effects out there. I personally like the ones that mill every player's, but you can really run whatever you like here. Next we have spells that repeatedly mill our opponents over the course of the game, with cards like Memory Erosion and Psychic Corrosion. These just mill players as we're playing Magic, which is just great. Then we have some effects that mill people, while also giving us a nice little bonus straight away from it. Extract from Darkness, Path of the Schema and Breach the Multiverse all get us an awesome creature as well. You then have Dread Summons and Stitcher Garolf to get us some tokens, and then Bond of Insight gets us back some spells for us to use again. And then lastly, for those in a bit of a rush, we have cards that mill half a player's library in one fell swoop, with effects like Maddening Concophony, Cut Your Losses, Fleet Swallower and Teresian Mindbreaker. Next up is our card draw section, and we have a bunch of really synergistic options for us to choose from. First up we have some expensive spells with some cost reduction built in. Cards like Discovery Dispersal, Lorien Revealed, Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise are all expensive spells when we need to discard them to the Ancient One to mill someone a bunch. But what's nice is they all have a mode where they can be cast or used relatively cheaply for a bit of card draw as well. Next we have Whale of the Forgotten. This card does a little bit of everything, and if we have Descended, which we're planning on doing in this deck anyway, we'll get every option on the card. We then have the Everflowing Well. At a base level it comes in, mills us for two and we draw two cards. But if we start a turn with eight permanents in our graveyard, it flips into the Myriad Pools. This taps some mana and can turn any of our little permanents into a copy of one of our game winning creatures later on. For some free card draw that adds to the graveyard count really easily, we have Mishra's and Urza's Bauble. They just replace themselves for free while filling up the bin. Absolutely great. We then have some enchantments that draw us cards, with Mystic Remora and Omen of the Sea. In this deck, we want a lot of permanents, and these are great at giving us that card selection that we need while also being useful if we end up milling them. We then have some cards that I think will do a lot of work in this deck, with Cartouche of Knowledge, Rune of Flight and Stratus Walk. They all draw us a card when they come in, which is just great, but then importantly they can also give our 8-8 commander flying. That added evasion will just make our commander all the scarier. In a similar vein we have Sleeper's Robes. This gives our commander fear, and then whenever it deals combat damage, it'll draw us a card every time it connects. 
Next up is our ramp section, and like with most decks we need a solid base of 8 to 10 bits here. For some synergistic options we have Deranged Assistant and Millikanin. They ramp us ahead and fill up our graveyard, exactly what we're after. After that you have your Soul Ring, your Wayfarer's Bauble, your Arcane Signet and a whole host of really solid mana rocks to get your deck up to the 8 to 10 bits that you need. They're just really solid, they're staples, play them in your deck. Next up is our interaction section. We start with a base of 8 bits and then go up from there the more competitive that your playgroup is. First up we're going to be looking at some cards that have expensive mana costs but are actually free to cast. You have cards like Snuff Out, the Blue Force of Will in Contagion, and then you also have Submerge. These are all really great bits of interaction that we don't have to spend any mana to cast, but what's great is they all have a pretty high mana value so are perfect to be discarded to our commander if we just want to get the mill train going. We then have some more expensive spells with Never To Return, which when discarded will have the mana value of both half of the split card, and then Curtain's Call. This when we cast it will get reducing cost equal to the number of opponents that we have. We then also have Shadow Grange Archfiend. With our commander we can madness it out really consistently, and when it comes in it'll take out each of our opponents best creatures with it. We then have the one ring to rule them all, which I'll be honest is a hell of a card in this deck. Firstly we make our commander the ring bearer, and then each player will mill 8 cards. Then we'll destroy all non legendary creatures, and then each opponent will lose a life for each creature card in their graveyard. Honestly this card does everything that we want in this deck, it's absolutely insane. Then we have some counter magic with Psychic Strike, and the removal spell with Grizzly Spectacle. What they both have in common is that they have some lovely mail tacked onto them as well, which we love. Then lastly, we're in Demir, we have plenty of really solid efficient options that you can choose from to suit any budget. I know most of the cards I've gone over in this section have been really synergistic, but sometimes you just need to kill things for cheap, so again, run what works best for you. Next up is some recursion. With all the self mill, having some ways of getting some of our spells back will just be super helpful. First up we have cards like Reanimate, From the Catacombs and Virtue of Persistence. These all importantly allow us to return a creature from any graveyard into play, meaning we can turn our opponents best creatures against them. We then have the Cauldron of Eternity, a great 12 mana spell that will actually cost a lot less than that to cast. Once it's into play it can bring a creature back from our graveyard every turn from then onwards. We then have Captain Nugathrod. Basically, with this in play, once a turn we get to steal a creature or artifact from among the cards that our opponents have milled. Again, with everything that we're doing in this deck, it's just repeatable card advantage. Next up is a little bit of protection. We do have an 8-8 commander that can take massive chunks out of our opponents' libraries, so it will get some attention. Cards like Lightning Grease and Swiftfoot Boots are just staple cards for keeping our commander in play, and then the added haste will just be great at letting it rumble in straight away. We then have some specific counter magic. You have cheap cards like An Offer You Can't Refuse and Swan Song, which are great at countering the spells we actually care about countering, and then you have a card like Commit to Memory, which is a delay counter spell, while also being a massively costed spell if we want to discard it. Then lastly we have Perpetual Timepiece. This not only helps mills us, but also protects any key cards in our graveyard from any pesky interaction our opponents might have. Ok, we have the base of the deck, let's go over some dedicated ways of winning the game. First up we have some ways of stealing spells from our opponents graveyards. We have cards like Memory Plunder, which steals any instant or sorcery from our opponents graveyards, and then we have two beasts of magic cards with Diluvian Primordial and Sepulchral Primordial. These steal any spell from all of our opponents graveyards, perfect for rewarding us for all that milling that we've been doing. We then have possibly two of the scariest cards in this deck, with Sir Conrad the Grim and Dreadhound. These both make our opponents lose a life whenever any creature is put into a graveyard, either from play or importantly if they are milled. With everything that this deck is doing, these will honestly be super scary and in my opinion are must includes. In a similar vein we also have Dusk Mantle Guild Mage, which if we can activate that top ability is another version of those previous effects. Changing gear a bit, we have Night Howler and Bone Horde, which we can attach to our commander to easily make it a 21 point of damage lethal threat. Then on top of that we have Wonder, a great card that if we can mill into our graveyard will easily give all of our creatures flying, again including our commander, which we love. Then for an awesome haymaker we have Rise of the Dark Realms. Honestly by the time we cast this it'll probably just win us the game, as it'll bring every creature from every graveyard back into play under our control. We're rounding off the deck with some utility lands, and we have a couple of really cool options to look at. First we have Seagate Restoration, a perfectly fine land to play on the backside, but if we want to discard it it'll make a player mill 7 cards. Talking of milling we have Dust Mantle House of Shadow and Nefalia Drownyard. These are just great bonus bits of mill for the deck to run. We then have Port of Carfell, Takanuma Abandoned Mire, and Tomb Fortress. These are lands that can bring a creature that we've milled back, so we can use it over again. And then lastly, we have Mystic Sanctuary, a great way of bringing a key spell back on top of our library so we can get some more lovely value out of it. Right, thank you all very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.